Baswa and his sister Sundari live in the port town of Mamallapuram during the Pallava period. Their father, a sailor, has not returned home from his voyage to Cambodge and the children are worried. When they go to the port to find out if anyone there has information about their father's ship, they realize to their dismay that the foreign sailors there don't speak a word of their language. What are they going to do now? The title of the story, Sailing Home. Written by Subhadra Sengupta, illustrated by Tapas Guha, published by Pratham Books. Baswa and his sister Sundari sat on the sand watching the sun rise over the sea. Slowly, the sky turned from grey to blue and the edges of the clouds became an orange colour. They sat staring at the horizon that line in the distance where the bowl of the sky seemed to curve down to meet the sea. Their father was a sailor who had sailed away on a merchant ship many months ago. The children were eagerly waiting for him to come back home. So every morning at sunrise, they came and waited by the beach, hoping to see the tall red sails of their father's ship rise slowly above the horizon. The children had seen many ships come and go because they lived in Mamallapuram, which was a busy port. The ships came from many distant lands carrying exciting cargo, chests of silk and pottery, jars full of wine, perfumes and even horses. Their father's ship had sailed out carrying logs of cedar and sandalwood and bags of spices, rice and ghee. It's been so many months, Sundari said sadly. Appa has never been away for so long. Remember that big storm last week? Baswa added worriedly. The sea was full of high waves. I hope Appa's ship is safe. Look, a ship is coming said Sundari excitedly. But I can't see the sails. As they watched eagerly, a ship appeared on the horizon. It was a small dot that slowly grew larger as it came closer. First, they saw the sails filling out with the wind. Then the high masts and the wooden bow rose into the view. No, said Baswa disappointed. A part ship has red cells with a flying eagle painted on them. This one has black and green cells. They felt disappointed and decided to go home. They had work to do. They had to help their mother at her vegetable stall in the market. Their father was often away from home and after a while, all the money he left behind would get over. That is why their mother sold vegetables so that they had enough to eat. Sundari enjoyed working at the vegetable stall. The market was such an interesting place. Often their customers were sailors from different lands, some with pale skins and narrow tilted eyes and some with dark skins and curly hair. They wore odd clothes and jewellery and spoken languages Sundari couldn't understand at all. This morning, as Baswa was laying out bundles of spinach and cabbage, one of their regular customers came to buy vegetables. She was the wife of a trader who often sent spices to other lands by ship. She knew all about the ships coming and going from Mamallapuram. As she picked through the radishes and beans, the trader's wife asked, Any news of your father? Sundari shook her head sadly. Why don't you go and ask at the jetty where all the ships are anchored? She said. Ask what? Baswa leaned forward eagerly. Ask the sailors if they have seen your father's ship on their way to Mamallapuram. My husband does that quite often when his ships are late. That afternoon, the children headed towards the main jetty. 
they went through the market and took the street going towards the sea they went past the warehouse where the merchants kept the goods mean to be loaded into ships in one warehouse laborers were unloading bags of pepper and coriander seeds in another they were stacking up bales of cotton cloth woven in bright colors three ships stood anchored at the jetty tied to the shore by thick ropes two more ships were waiting out at sea small boats were moving in and out among them with the boatmen sailing everything from flowers and fruits to beads and wood carvings among the ships anchored at the jetty was the ship with the black and green sails that they had seen in the morning they went towards the ship that was being loaded with goods as they neared it a soldier carrying a spear stopped them halt watch where you are going the man yelled no one is allowed on this ship without a royal permit permit sundari looked puzzled why because it is a royal ship you silly girl you mean this ship belongs to the royal navy baswa's eyes widened in surprise are we going to war of course not this is a trading ship his majesty king narsimha verman owns many ships that trade with far off kingdoms this one is going to the port of tamralipti in the north we are looking for a ship that has come from the kingdom of kamboj sundari began hesitantly our father is a sailor and he sailed for kamboj many months ago we want to ask the sailors if they have seen his ship kamboj the soldier asks he then pointed to the ship with the black and green sails and said that ship has arrived from there baswa and sundari ran to the ship up the gangplank and on to its deck they stopped when they saw that all the sailors on board were foreigners they were speaking to each other in a strange tongue oh no baswa sigh how do we make them understand us easy sundari green we talk to them like amma does when they come to buy vegetables of course laughed baswa we act and make signs with our hands they looked around trying to spot a sailor with a friendly face finally they went up to a sailor sitting on a roll of rope he was an old man with a dark leathery and sunburned face there were deep lines around his narrow eyes he wore loose pajamas a sleeveless jacket bright bangles and earrings kamboj sundari asked nervously the man nodded happily kamboj baswa pointed to the sail then he pointed to the red skirt sundari was wearing and said ship red sail the man frowned and shook his head sundari tried to explain she tapped the side of the ship and said ship then she pointed to the sails and to her skirt sail red the man pointed to the sea and said something in his own language yes a ship with red sails have you seen it sundari asked excitedly the man looked a bit puzzled our father appa sundari was acting out a tall man with a mustache oh the man then flapped his arms to mimic a bird flying yes the children jumped and yelled in delight a flying eagle is on the sail the man was laughing as he stood up and pulled them by their hands to the other end of the ship then he pointed to the horizon where a ship was slowly sailing towards them its red sails blowing proudly in the breeze baswa and sundari were speechless there before their eyes were the familiar high masts 
the curving pro the red cells with flying eagles your appa is a sailor the man asked gently looking at their delighted faces is he on that ship oh the children stared at him in disbelief you can speak our language sundari exclaimed a little bit the man laughed i come to mamallapuram often but i did enjoy your acting especially the tall man with the mustache part <laughs> baswa and sundari taught their sailor friend many new words as they stood at the jetty waiting happily for the ship to come home hi the story is over so let's get some more information Basfa and Sundari lived over 1200 years ago in the kingdom of King Narasimhavarman of the famous Pallav dynasty. The Pallav kingdom extended over present day Tamil Nadu. The town of Mamallapuram is near Chennai and is famous for its temples. Mamallapuram is also famous by name Mahabalipuram which is in Kanchipuram district in Tamil Nadu. At one time it was a port from where ships sailed to Cambodia, Burma and Indonesia. Kamboj is the ancient name of Cambodia and Tamralipti was a port in Bengal. What did children study in school in the Pallav times? The subjects included logic, law, mathematics, grammar, astronomy, philosophy, the Vedas, economics and politics women especially of noble families were educated but were not allowed to study the vedas people in the pallav times dyed their hair used scented hair oil and perfumes they even used toothpicks after their meals wow that was fun right do you want to hear more stories like this Yes, then log on to www.books.speak.com. Eruvavi, Eruvavi.